Derek, hi, it's Carlos. I'm outside. Are you almost ready? Mm, I am. <laughs> You're going to like the weather today. Oh, oh, yeah. I don't know if John's going to like it. We'll see anyway. I'll see you in a few minutes. Bye. Bye. Hello, Derek. We're a little bit early, so we don't really have to rush the first part. Oh, you got new shoes? Yeah. The day that it rains is the day I wear my new shoes. I already got splattered by the, uh, the bike. All right. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Well, this is about as hard as it's rained all day. I hope it stops pretty soon. Well, I don't want to get cold. <coughs> well, the smell of that truck made me cough. So, how did the job interview go at oh, Thrifty's? Oh, they, didn't, they never told me that, so I'm assuming they want something, someone in, inexperienced that they don't have to um, pay as much. Oh, they maybe rather, that's, you're overqualified. What? You're overqualified. You have yeah. too much experience yeah. for what they're offering. I'd rather hire somebody on minimum wage than somebody where they have to pay an extra dollar. Yeah. What about uh, your other job? Is that still okay? Yeah. Four days a week. Hours. So hours. Uh, all together. Yeah. Four hours. So thirty-two hours. Sixteen hours. Well, in one month. So thirty-two hours. Sixty-four hours a month. Is that how it works out? Yep. No, it's every two weeks. Oh, yeah. That would be 32 hours every two weeks. Let's walk a little bit. What? Guess what? Yeah. We got ourselves an exercise bike. For home. What? An exercise bike. Oh, yeah. I so, remember you had a really old one. Yeah, we it used to have a really old one. I think it was a Sears or something like that. But that weighed a ton. It had a huge flywheel. This one came in the in the mail. The mailman had to bring this big box. And then we had to assemble it. And it runs on double A batteries. It does? Yeah. Oh, the little. Thing. The display, yeah. It's even got a heart rate monitor on it. If you hold on to the bars. It gives you your heart rate. But I was quite impressed how well made it was. You always expect it to be like a hunk of junk. But this one was really well put together. It had all the right washers, all the right screws. How much was that? I think it was about 300. I know my share was 160.
So I guess it was about 320. Pretty cheap. That's about the same as a year's membership in a gym. Talking of memberships, do you still have a membership? Yeah. With which one? Anytime Fitness. Anytime Fitness. Are they Canadian? I'm not too sure. No. Watch out for this guy. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I heard that there. Yeah? I was like, oh man, not again. Not again. Same old story. That's what I got on the bus. The jackal gets punched. I saw the punch guy on the bus. Yeah. Uh, two weeks ago. Or a month ago. It was just here that he socked me. And that's where I'm expecting to see John, near the flag. Yeah, yeah you said you saw the man that punched me on the bus. Yeah. Wow. That's quite a coincidence. So if he has money to, to get the bus. Yeah, then, wow. Well, you might have one of those passes. Yeah. You know how they give out free passes? Yeah. I think they give it out for people on welfare. Yeah. Or people on medical disability. Yeah. I get one of those. You do? Yeah. I haven't been on the bus since February. I don't, uh... Since your last date with Norma? No, since, uh, before we went away. Oh. Oh. Now we have to watch out for John. You okay? And the rain is stopping. Much to your disappointment. So because uh, it only started after the first four minutes, it's going to seem that we did a shorter run. But we've got to add on four minutes. Huh? There's a guy wearing a mask. Do they make you wear a mask at work? No. No? I guess not. I guess part of your work is outdoors. No. Oh, this is nice. The sun might even come out. Oh, yeah. That's not good. <laughs> yeah. He remembers from when the jackal call was first invented. Ooh. Yeah, he's known me that long. Alright, this is his place here. John, we're outside. Are you ready? Oh. Okay. Well, listen, uh, we'll see you next week, maybe. Bye-bye. He emailed me, but I didn't check my email. Oh, well, what did it say? Well, I didn't check it, did I? Uh, no, but what did he say on the phone? He said I, he's got a breakfast meeting or something. Oh, He's having his meeting now. Well, lucky you showed up, eh? Otherwise, I would have come all this way for nothing. Yeah.
Derek saves the day. That's what I'll call it. The episode will be Derek saves the day. Oh well. Oh, I, I, I had this head in my song. It was wrong. So you had a song in your head, not a head in your song. That's not a real song, is it? Oh, okay. I think it was uh, a nursery rhyme. No, it was a 60s song. It was Sam Cook, I think. Oh. I could be wrong, but uh, I don't think I've ever heard that. Maybe it's the way you're singing it. Yeah. There was me thinking I was going to have to do two laps today. Oh. Well, one with you and one with John, but because John's not coming... Do another one. <laughs> we could do our, our old 5K loop. How about that? Or, or old 8K run. We should do that one to the beach. Huh. What about that one? Maybe not today. <laughs> I'm going to be out in this weather for the next couple of hours. Unless we're going to be shorter, is the next to run to the beach and back. So there'll be like one and a half laps. Uh, when you say run to the beach, you mean that time we, we saw the dog on the skateboard? Yeah. The dog on the skateboard park? Yeah. I think that's called Tulaska Park or something like that. A Tusula Park. I'm not sure what it's called. It's near where the ferry to the States is. Yeah. They used to call it the Anna Cordes Ferry. Now they changed it to the Washington Ferry. Yeah. yeah. So, it's not the Anna Cordes Ferry anymore. Well, it is. Yeah, but they call it now the Washington where it stops. Oh. They, they used to call it the end of the Yeah, they used to do. And now the bus, the, um, the robot voice on the bus yeah. is that Washington Ferry. Oh. Yeah. Maybe it's to tell the people to get off if they want to take the Washington Ferry. Anyway. So which bus was that? The 81? All of them. All of them? I know, 72. Uh, yes, but we did. 71, 72. Yeah, I saw the 81 bus. That's a nice little bus, that one. I think it goes to Brentwood. Yeah. Sam, Jimmy. Yep. If you were going to the Prairie Inn pub, I think you'd get that bus. So when do you think you're going to hear from the people at Thrifties? No, not anymore. Who thinks that? No, when? When do you oh. think you're going to hear from oh, them? Oh, they won't, no. Because of what you were saying? Yeah. They'd have to pay more? Yeah. That's why you see all these young people now. But where would that have been? In Sydney? Yeah. Okay. Because I thought, you're crazy. Why do you want to get a job in town? Because he used to work at the one in Broadmead. And Broadmead, yeah. That's where you learn all about watermelons. Yeah. You must have had a good teacher. All 
you have to do is go back and apply for a job as produce manager. Well, they already have one though. Yeah, but then you'd be worth paying extra because of your skills. You could say, I want to apply for a job as produce manager specializing in watermelons. Oh, it would say on um, that website, indeed, if they wanted one. It would uh -huh. say, yeah. Produce clock. Yeah. Well, it would say manager. Oh, okay. You know, at the beginning, when I had to walk a couple of times, I think that was more to do with the fact that I knew we were early for John. Hello. I knew that guy hadn't seen me. He was walking around his truck. He did, didn't he? He looked like a Bugs Bunny. A hillbilly. <laughs> There's the bus. 72. Sanishton's Ferry. Schwartz Bay. You know there's a thrift store in Sydney that's run by Beacon. The Beacon Thrift Store. Yeah, about six. Yeah, well anyway, John works in one of them. Really? Yeah. As a volunteer. In Sydney? Yep. Oh yeah, I went in there and I got... Uh, all five seasons of MacGyver, still brand new. V VHS or C CD? DVD. DVD. So, and for nine bucks. MacGyver. And I could have, I could have sold them for a hundred and twenty dollars, but huh. I said no, I like them too much. Talking of twenty dollars, I know you said a hundred and twenty, but Norma was looking through her drawers, and she found an old. Canadian $20 bill. Oh no, it wasn't a 20. It was a $2 bill. $2 bill. A red one. With a black stripe down the middle. And a very young looking queen. And apparently, if they're in good condition, they could be worth as much as $2,000. Really? Yeah. You know what you should do? Uh, press it. Press it. <laughs> no, like steam up. The steam iron. Yeah. yeah. Just go on Google or uh, YouTube and say how to flatten a uh, uh, dollar bill. Yeah. But it'd have to be in really good condition oh, to yeah. be worth that much. It's like stamps. Well, if, if they got one corner missing, they're worthless. If it's not 2000 then you would get a thousand for it. Well, maybe, yeah. It's still worth way more than face value. Yeah. I said to her, I'll give you a hundred for it. And she thought about it and she said, nope, I'll keep it. So I could call this episode the day that Derek saved the day. Or I could call it the $2, $2,000 bill. Oh, no, <laughs> too, too, too long a title. <coughs> that's a funny, no, um, that's a funny, um, it would be too greedy of a title. <laughs> yeah, it would be too much of a tongue twister. Anyway. So do we? Do you want to go on and make it into a 5K today? To the beach? Not to the beach. That would be five miles. Oh, no, I think I'm good with one mile. All right. 
Because if we wanted to make it 5k, we would have to go to Mills Road. Uh, no. John Road. I think it's called John Road. Anyway, we would remember the corner where the school is. Past that rest home. Do you know of anybody who's died of COVID? No. Not me neither. Not in Sydney. Yeah, but when they say the numbers in BC are up, that's probably Vancouver. But they talk about Vancouver and the two. Oh, okay. But if they say the numbers are up, but in Victoria the numbers are down, that means the numbers in Vancouver are way up. At my work, when there's like new cases. And look, he's got his sign up again. Help wanted. Oh. <laughs> they always wanted. Yep, they leave it there permanently. Because they, uh, they treat their employees like that. Yeah, you were saying. The guy takes his stress out on the workers. Well, if he's that stressful. He shouldn't run a business. He should work in a library. He doesn't, he doesn't know what stress is. He's doing his work at Montana. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. If you don't like the heat, stay out of the kitchen. That's what they say. If you can't stand the heat, stay out of the kitchen. So true as well. That's one of the reasons I gave up my job in my own business, because, you know, to make it really work, it would be very stressful. I'd have to work twice as hard. How many chairs did you have? Uh, in the end, we had about 40 seats. Holy crap. Yeah. At one time, I remember doing 30 covers in an hour. I had to do 30 meals in an hour. With no power? Uh, I had a waitress and a dishwasher. And I was the only cook. Occasionally the dishwasher would help. would help. And often the waitress would help by order organizing the the bills. Did I guess the cooks did the prep too? I did the prep. It's a three-person business. Waitress, cook, dishwasher. And that was after a year of just being a one-person business. Do you have chipotle sauce? No. It hadn't been invented then. Hello. New kill in town? Yep. You <laughs> got the switch. What? You got the switch. I heard that. All right, so that's a loop then. Getting back to restaurants, the way the waitress would help me is I would see five tables and I would look at the table one and organize all the things I had to do for table one. And then, sure enough, on table three... I had something else that was similar, same meal. I could have done three instead of one and served three people. So that's where the waitress helped me. When she had a bunch of orders, she would say to me, forget the table numbers. I want six chicken, two fish, and one pie as soon as you can manage it. And as they came, chicken pot pie. And as they came out, she would take them to the tables. So that system worked well. But that, you know what that was from? It was because of my reading blindness, mm. my dyslexia. Mm. I couldn't see past one bill to group them all together in my mind. I had to do boop, 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 one at a time. Yeah. 
It's difficult, isn't it? If you don't have that kind of mind. I was like that at AEW in the drive-thru because I, I only could do one order at a time. And, and they were all booked up with all the cars. And you see, and it just confuses the hell out of you when you see so many bills hanging on the hooks there. Well, it was on the machine, right? And oh. you could go further, but if you go further, then... It's so much more confusing. Yeah. Anyway... So I reckon that was pretty much one of our better runs, even though I missed the first bit of it. How fast was that? Jeez. Well, it would seem a lot faster, because, as I say, we've got to add four minutes to whatever Samantha says. Let's see what Samantha says. Samantha says 21. So that would have been 25 minutes for uh, our four points. Four, four, four. Oh, I mean, what, the pace? Seven minutes? Oh, the pace. Yeah, that's more important, isn't it? Uh, I have to stop it before I can give you the pace. Let me save that. The average pace today was, for our run, 7.28. So that's about average, isn't it? I thought it was faster. Huh. Yeah? Well, we did do a couple of long walks at the beginning. Well, what would it be, though, if we didn't do any breaks? Oh, it's hard to tell because sometimes when you take a break, when you start off again, you're fresh and you can go a little faster. Mm. So it's, it's debatable whether it's better to take breaks or better to, uh, to just plod your way through. If you start it's plodding... better to be, take breaks. If but you start plodding, yes, you don't want to be plodding because then you feel like you feel like crap. Mm -hmm. If you feel like if you start thinking you're feeling like crap, take a walk break, and then when you feel like I should be running by now, then you start running again. That's my advice for comfort zone training. But you, you, you taught me to not take breaks. I know, I know, but I've revised my opinion. I think breaks are, are valuable, but not by a timer. You don't do it by a timer. No. You do it by feel. Yeah. When you feel you need to take a break, you take a break. You don't say, I have to push on until I hear the timer, or, oh, I was feeling fine, and the timer's telling me to take a break. That's wrong. You should do it by feel. Um, I, I, don't, I don't want to take a break. Because, because yeah, if we didn't want to take breaks, we would have had to go a little slower right from the get-go. Because if your trains were... Um, uh, ultra, right? Then you wouldn't want to. No, that's right. If you're training for ultras, you, the, I, the, the secret is to, to keep moving all the time, not to take breaks. But because we're not running for more than, let's say, an hour total, mm -hmm. then um, taking breaks is okay. Well, listen, I'm going to get dressed. It's going to take me about 10 minutes to get ready to go, but. I could say goodbye to you here mm -hmm. until the COVID thing is is history. I'm not really going to come in the house. I, I do have a mask, but I know your doctor said you should be taking breaks now. My so. doctor said I shouldn't race. That's what he told me. Don't race. I don't mind you running till you're hundred. Mm, just run slow. Well, that's it. But I get excited like you. Do. Taking breaks. I think I'll have to get either very tired before I start so that I start slow. Or I have to remember just to start really slow. Because your doctor wanted you to take breaks. No. My doctor said don't race. He didn't say don't take... Don't. Oh, so does he... He doesn't he's... like me, the idea of me pushing the effort. Oh. I mean, you could go as slow as you like and not push any effort at all. But he, he doesn't want me to push. That's what he says. Because if you make a demand on your heart that your heart can't meet, then your heart goes into a spasm. And you start getting weird readings from your heart rate you don't want that so much so I took my heart rate monitor off today because I knew it was going to give me mistakes I think I, I need um, a gold crown and a root canal oh wow that was from the dentist yeah, and I already got a filling so I, do you have to pay for that yourself or is that what paid for I, I think the government Pays some of it, five percent of it. Yeah, but not for cosmetic uh, dental work. Yeah, I don't think they pay for that. If you wanted a diamond stud, they wouldn't pay for that. Because they say that's your own fault. So if you're in pain, that's different. If they're fixing a, a toothache, yeah. they should pay for it. Yeah. But if they're just fixing you up because you like, a, you want a nicer looking smile because you want gold teeth or something, mm -hmm. then they won't pay for that. No. All right, so listen, Derek, I will see you next week.
Don't get cold, all right? You're all nice and warm now. I'm gonna go home, have a hot shower, and then put on dry clothes. That's my plan. Indoor's back and running? She's back in business, yeah. She's still... We think she might be going blind. That's why she doesn't go out as much. She doesn't chase the birds. She doesn't even see them, as far as we can tell. She's more interested in hearing things. If you want to call her attention, you make a little scratching sound and she comes over. Yeah. Or you, you call her name, she remembers her name. Yeah. But in, in cat years, she's probably equivalent to 100 years old. Well, she's not... She's not spring chicken. She's not doing that tilt. Plan. She's not doing the tilt. She's not scampering up on the, on the fence like she used to. Her scampering days are over. So, I'll just call the episode Derek Saved the Day. Just call it that, eh? Thanks, Derek, for saving the day. Bye-bye.